Hello. I would like to do a Bible study with you today through this video. Uh, this Bible study was on my heart for a while now and uh, I taught it here to the local church in Trinity, Newfoundland. I taught it in a few churches in New Brunswick and in different places that I visited I would bring this topic up and uh, this topic is one of the most exciting topics in the Bible to me and I hope this will bless your heart and I hope it will give you a greater understanding of God and help you to follow him. Amen. That's the purpose of it all. And uh, I want to start with Zechariah 14 and 9. I got quite a lot of verses today that I'm going to go through, but grab your Bible and follow along. And if you need to pause the video to look at the Bible to follow, then go ahead and do that because that's the whole purpose, that we would learn more about God. And uh, so the topic is the name of God, the saving name of God today. Zechariah 14 and 9, the first verse. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. The Lord's going to be king over all the earth. And there shall be one Lord and his name one. There's only one Lord with one name. Amen. And uh, I want to go to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20 1 and 20 of Matthew but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the Lord which appeared to him in a dream saying Joseph thou son of David fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. The angel came to Joseph and said, Mary's going to have a baby, Joseph, but it's uh, the father is God, and uh, you're going to name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, I want to go into a name. In the Bible, a name was not like it is today, that we would just look in a baby book and, and Bill or George or Bob or Sue. Uh, a name back then, a lot of times, was given to a person because of the significance of the character of that person. And so a name is not uh, just what you would call somebody, but the name actually a lot of times was who that person was. And so you would call that person you know, by who they were, the character they had. And I'm going to give a few examples later on. But the scriptures we read, there will be one Lord with one name. And then the other verse was, Thou shalt name this child Jesus, because or for he shall save his people from their sins. And by naming him Jesus, they were fulfilling a scripture that there, well, a virgin will be with child and bring forth a son. And you're going to call him Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. I'm going to talk about the name of God. Now first I want to talk about Jesus, the name Jesus. Where's the name Jesus come from? Now Jesus, that's in English of course. In Greek it would be Iesus. And uh, this word comes from, in the Hebrew, Yehoshua, which means Jehovah saved. Or Yehoshua, Jehovah saved. Jehovah saved. Yeah, it's, uh, of course, all capital uh, letters in the Bible. When you see that in the Old Testament, it's translated Jehovah. Or, and that means the self-existent, eternal God. And so, when you think of a name today, don't think of, of just a handle or what you're going to call. But the name was the characteristic of the one owning it. A name was uh, who you was. And I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, in Genesis 17 and 5... The Lord was talking to Abram before his name was changed to Abraham. And he said, Neither shall thy name be any more called Abram. That's high father. It literally means high father. But thy name shall be called Abraham, which means father of a multitude. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So the Lord told Abram, You're a high father now, Abram. That's literally what Abram means, the word Abram. And he said, now, you're a high father, but you're not going to be known as a high father anymore because I have made you a, a father of many nations, and so therefore your name is going to be called Abraham. 
Abraham literally means a father of many nations. So the Lord was talking to Abram here and he said, I'm going to make you, you're going to be a father of many nations, therefore your name is a father of many nations. Your name is Abraham. See, it's not just a, what you would call it, but he was a father of many nations because the Lord made him that, so that's what his name was. His name was who he was. And uh, we can go on another example. Ruth, in the book of Ruth, 1 and verse 19, the Bible said that, of course, Ruth and Naomi was coming back to Bethlehem. So when they came to Bethlehem, this is what it says, they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass that when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Now, Naomi, if you know the story, you can look it up. Naomi, he, she left with her husband and her, her children, and she lost her boys and lost her husband. They died. And so now she's head coming back with nothing. She's bitter. And so they come. Is this not Naomi? Now, Naomi literally means pleasant. And so she was coming back. She said, don't call me pleasant anymore. Don't call my name, me Naomi, but call me Myra, because Myra literally means bitter. So she was saying, don't call me pleasant. I'm not pleasant anymore. Call me bitter, because the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. So a name was the character of that person, or the character of that person in the Bible times would be what they were known as. That would become their name. And so we're going to look up uh, some compound names for the nature of God. Of course, Jehovah, or the existent eternal God, or almighty God, self-existent one, uh, Jehovah. Uh, he, down through history, like raindrops, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. The Lord has revealed his nature a little bit down through history. Amen. And, and so there would be people that would know God at, by one thing, by one of his characteristics, that he would reveal a new characteristic about himself. And so they would know him as, you know, by another compound name or another name they would have for God because that's what he was. And the first example for that in Genesis 22 and 14. Here Abraham and Isaac is going up the mountain for uh, to offer. Of course, Abraham's going to offer Isaac uh, as a sacrifice. The Lord was testing him and trying him. And uh, so on the way up, of course, Isaac, well, where's the animal that's going to be a sacrifice? He said, well, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And so up on the mountain they go, and, and an angel stopped Abraham, of course, from taking the life of his son. And he, he let Abraham know that you were just being tested to see if you would obey the Lord. And the Bible said they looked, and a ram was caught in a thicket, of course, and so they went and caught the ram, and they slain the ram and offered it for a sacrifice, and they realized that God provided a sacrifice. God provided the sacrifice even for there. And so they realized then that God is not just an existent, eternal God Almighty. He is a provider. Amen. And so they, they called that place, the name of the place, Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Which means the Lord will provide a sacrifice. And so when they were talking about God now, they would be able to say God is a provider. Her God is Jehovah Jireh. He is a provider. Later on in life, uh, in, in Exodus 16 and 26, another example is this. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ears to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. So now God had revealed not just he, is he a provider, but he's a healer. You see? And so they would call the name Jehovah Rapha, or the Lord our healer. Jehovah is our healer. And so now they knew he's not just a, a provider, but... God is also a healer. See, God had, had showed people who he was a little more clear. Now he, they would know him as a healer. Amen. God is a healer. Thank God for that. Uh, then later on, in the time of Gideon, Judges 6 and 22, it says this, And when Gideon perceived that 
He was an angel of the Lord. Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. And Gideon built an altar there to the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet, you know, in, in such a place. But he named the place Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom means the Lord our peace. Amen. He realized that God can bring peace. God's given them the victory. God's going to take care of them. God is their peace. So not only is he a healer now, but he's a, they realize that God is our peace. He brings peace to us. And later on, we go into other examples, Exodus 17 and 15. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is our banner. Uh, David in Psalms 23, he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Jehovah Ra. Jehovah Ra, the Lord our shepherd. So, see, David realized that God, not only as a healer, our peace, all these things, but he is our shepherd. Amen. God is our shepherd. And so you would be able to say Jehovah Ra and say the, the characteristic of God that he is our shepherd. See, these are all characteristics of the nature of God. The, the compound names. He's our banner. He's our peace. He's our healer. He's our provider. And so that would become because that is who he is. That is his characteristics. Rightfully so, they would be his names that he would be able to go by because that's what he is. We can go on at Ezekiel 48 and 35. The Lord is present. Jehovah Shema, of course, the Lord is ever present help in trouble, always there. And so we got some compound names of God, some different characteristics, and there's many more characteristics of God. One place the Bible said his name is Jealous, because he's a jealous God. He don't want you uh, serving no other nobody but him and worshiping anybody but him. Because he is a jealous God, the Bible said, and his name is Jealous. So, because that's what he was. Amen. The Bible said the Lord is his name in one place, because he is the Lord. And so his name will be called the Lord. These are rightfully, you know, names to describe who God is. Amen. Different characteristics of God. And so, we're going to talk about the salvation name, the saving name. Amen. Exodus 15 and 1 says this. Exodus 15 and 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Amen. So, if you remember, we talked about Jesus, what his name means. Now, Jesus, Jesus in the Greek, I'm just going to review. Uh, but in the Hebrew, Yehoshua, or Jehovah, saved. Now, down here in Exodus 51, that we just read, uh, Moses was singing this song, or in the children of Israel, and verse 2 says this of Exodus 15, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. God is my salvation. Now what he was saying in the Hebrew, God is or, or Yeshua. Amen. Yeshua. In the, in the Greek, he would say, God is the, my strength and song. He has become my Jesus. But in English, the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus, amen, means literally Jehovah is our salvation. God is our salvation. Amen. So when you look at God as a Savior, His name would be Jesus. You're looking at Him as Jesus. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 12 and 2. And please keep following along. Hopefully this will be uh, made more clear later on in this study. Isaiah 12 and 2 says this. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, Jehovah, he is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, ye shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. In that day ye shall say, Praise the Lord, call on his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention 
that his name is exalted. Now we're talking about the name, the salvation name or the saving name of God Almighty. The characteristic he used to, to save us. Amen. He said, God is my salvation. All this, listen, therefore with joy you shall draw waters out of the wells of salvation. Amen. God is my Yeshua. The Lord is my salvation. God is, uh, you know, he was saying, behold, God is is Jesus, amen, the saving name of God. And then he goes, I will trust and not be afraid. He's my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. God has become my Yeshua. God has become my Jesus, amen. See, because his characteristic is God is a Savior. Therefore, you could say his name would be Jesus. God is Savior. That's what he is, and that's who he is. Uh, so, therefore, with joy you shall draw waters out of the wells of Yeshua, or out of the wells of salvation, or out of the wells of Jesus. Now, isn't that something he said, Out, you'll draw water out of the wells of Jesus, out of the wells of salvation. Uh, that makes sense, because in John 7 and 37, Jesus said at the feast, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. <laughs> he could come to Jesus and drink. Because, of course, he'll draw waters out of the wells of Jesus. Salvation comes through Jesus, you see. And so Jesus said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. He that believe, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, that they which believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. Well, he could say that, because you're going to draw waters out of the wells of Jesus, out of the wells of salvation. Listen to this back in Isaiah 12 and 4, and I know you might have to jump around a bit, but Isaiah 12 and 4, in that day ye shall say, praise the Lord, and call on his name. What day is that? It's the day that you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. <laughs> in the day you'll draw waters out of the wells of salvation, you're going to call, say, praise the Lord, and call on his name. Jesus said, if you come to me, and he said, come unto me and drink, he that thirst. And then he said about the what the water was. The scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he's talking about the Holy Ghost, obviously. He, uh, the spirit that they which believe on him should receive, John 7 and 39. Now we're going to see this uh, come to pass in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost was poured out in Acts chapter 2. And, uh, and, of course, they all begin to speak with tongues as the Holy Ghost give them the utterance, the 120 in the upper room, filled with the Holy Ghost. And Acts chapter 2, 17, listen to this. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I'll pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor, smoke. Listen to this. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the living water, out of the, we go back, you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation or out of the wells of Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me and, dr and drink if you thirst. And then he talked about the water being the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when the Holy Ghost is poured out in Acts chapter 2, they called on the name of the Lord in the very day that you'll draw water out of the wells of salvation or and when the Holy Ghost is poured out in that day you'll say, praise the Lord, call on his name. When the Holy Ghost is poured out, uh, amen. Peter said, they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, calling on the name, the saving name of God. Now, we're going to talk about the saving name of God. Jehovah Savior, amen. He, God only is our Savior, amen. Isaiah 43 and 10 says this, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I, am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, the Lord. Now Lord, here's all capitals again, Jehovah. I am the Lord and beside me there is no Savior. He said here, I am the Lord and beside me there is no Yehoshua. There is no Lord our Savior besides me. Nobody can 
have the embodiment of the meaning of that name except God, Jehovah our Savior. Amen. Nobody can be the Savior but Him. So nobody has the right to use that name, Jehovah Savior, except Him. Or nobody will embody the full meaning of that name and actually be what that name means except for Jehovah. Amen. Savior. Matthew 1 and 21 going on. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why do you call his name Jesus? For he shall save his people from their sins. See what she was literally saying there. She shall bring forth a son, and you're going to call his name Jehovah, our Savior, because he's going to save his people from their sins. Now, we just read earlier, Jehovah said, nobody is allowed, you know, to embody that name or be that name except me. There's no Savior but me. Now, when Jesus was born, they said, or the angel said, you're going to call his name Jehovah Savior or Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. Now, why would you name him Jesus? Because he'll save his people from their sins. Because it was done, in verse 22, this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. By naming this child Jehovah our Savior, or Jesus in English, she was fulfilling the scripture. You're going to call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Jehovah the Old Testament, the Spirit of God, overshadowed Mary. Amen. And when the, the babe was conceived in her womb, that Spirit of God become one. And with that baby boy, amen, and God become flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelled among us. And nobody but Jesus can have, you know, be have that name as in, have the characteristics of that name. Jesus was not just a name you would call him, but that's what he indeed was. He was God with us. He was God Almighty, Jehovah, our Savior. Amen. The God had become our Savior. Amen. Through the incarnation, through coming down as a man in Jesus Christ. Amen. God has become our Savior. Amen. We're going to go on. Isaiah, about the name of God. Isaiah 9 and 6. Listen to this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. And his name shall be called. Now, these are his names. These are what he is. He is. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Why is he going to be called Wonderful? Because he is Wonderful. Why is he going to be called Counselor? Because he is a Counselor. Why is he going to be called the Mighty God? Because he is the Mighty God. Why is he going to be called the Everlasting Father? Because that's what he is. And he also is the Prince of Peace. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Because that is who Jesus is. Amen. And because he is that, they are his, what well, you would say, names. You could call him the mighty God, because that's what he is. That would be his names. Amen. He is the wonderful. That's his name. See, according to the book of, that is what he was. So that would be his name. Of all these names, amen, he only chose one name to save us by. Amen. He only has one name to save us by. Oh yeah, he is the Father. Amen. Because, amen, his name shall be called Father. Because that's what he is. Amen. Matthew 28 and 19. His name shall, you know, and, and he is the Son. Because that's what he is. He become the flesh. The word become flesh. Amen. You could call him the Holy Ghost. Because that's what he is. God is a spirit. And God is holy. God is a Holy Spirit. So you could call him that. So Father would be a name. Uh, Son would be a name. Holy Ghost would be a name. Because they are characteristics of who God is. But of all the names that he had, all the characteristics he revealed, he only revealed one name we're going to be saved by. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, Jehovah Savior, is the name he chose to save people by. Let's turn to Hebrews 1 and 1. Hebrews 1 and 1. God, who at sundry times and diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom we have appointed heir of all things, by whom 
also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Jesus obtained his name by inheritance. How do you obtain a name by inheritance? Well, I obtained my name by inheritance, my family name, Mun, because my father's last name was Mun, and his father's last name was Mun, and, and I inherited the family name because I am his son. And so, in order for me to inherit a name, my father had to have that name. Amen. And so I inherited my name through my father. Bible said Jesus hath by inheritance obtained a name more excellent than the angels. How did he receive that name by inheritance? Because remember we read in Isaiah, Isaiah 43, we read Jehovah talking, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Jehovah, the Old Testament, God, the Spirit of God in the Old Testament, said there's no Savior but me. Nobody is Jehovah's Savior. Nobody embodies the name Jesus but me in the Old Testament. Now when God become flesh, the Bible said the Word was manifest in the flesh and dwelled among us. God Himself become in the flesh. The Spirit of God overshadowed Mary. Mary, the, the babe was conceived in her womb and the Spirit of God came down and put His qualities or characteristics inside of that baby boy in the womb. Amen. And that baby boy or the humanity, the fleshly tabernacle that the Spirit of God dwelled in, took on the name, amen, of His Father. The name of the Spirit Amen. That overshadowed Mary. And that name was Jesus. Amen. The Bible said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he's going to save his people. You're going to call this babe Jehovah Savior. You're going to call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. God took on the form of a servant. God become in flesh like a man. God manifest in the flesh. And, and that flesh that he was manifested in received the same name as the Spirit, amen, that dwell in the flesh. Amen. The name Jesus, the very name of God Almighty. The name Jesus was God's name, amen, a name or characteristic of God before he ever come in flesh. He always was the Savior. But he revealed himself in fullness as the Savior, Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus obtained his name by inheritance. He alone is the Savior. Amen. 1 Timothy 3.16 says this. Listen to this. 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Who was God was. God was received up into glory. God was manifest in the flesh. Amen. And that flesh had took on the characteristics and the name of the spirit that was in that flesh. Jesus. Jehovah our Savior has become in flesh. Amen. Praise God. Manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached and Gentiles. Believed on the world. Received up into glory. Amen. Jesus. God our Savior. Amen. Jehovah our Savior. The saving name of God of all the names. Amen. All the characteristics he would go by is Savior. Because he's our Savior. Amen. When he saves us, he, he shows to us the characteristic of him as Savior. Amen. He is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Philippians 2 and 6. Let's turn to Philippians 2 and 6. Who being in the form of God, talking about Jesus, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven. Every knee in heaven is going to bow. Every knee on earth is going to bow. And things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Listen to this. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now what did we read earlier in Isaiah 43 and 10? Amen. Uh, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Ye may know and believe me, and understand I am he. And beside before me there was no God formed, and neither shall there be after me. There's no God, he said, formed before me. No God going to be ever formed after me. But here it said, Jesus, who being in the form of God, amen, he was God, amen. He weren't, didn't thought you get robbery to equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, took on himself the form of a servant, died on the cross. And it said, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and under the earth, every tongue should confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen, in Jesus' name. Mark 16 and 15 says this, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All these things is going to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because by saying the name of Jesus Christ, you're saying the very saving name of God Almighty. Amen. Jesus Christ. Praise God. No other name under heaven. The Bible says in Acts 4 and 2, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No salvation in any other name. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It makes sense. If I'm going to be saved, I'm going to be saved by the name of Jesus or the name of Jehovah Savior. Amen. Because He's the Savior. If I'm going to be saved, I've got to be saved by the Savior. Amen. I've got to be saved by the name of Jesus. No other name under heaven given among men. There's no other name of all the characteristics of God. There's none other name given to us that can wash away our sins, that can save us. Amen. There's no other name we can be saved by. Acts chapter 10 and 43 says this, To him gave, and of course Peter is preaching at Cornelius, Cornelius' household. And if you want to, you can read the whole thing in Acts chapter 10. But verse 43 says this. He was continued preaching. To him, or to Jesus, gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall have remission of sins. Now, it says that through his name, through the name of Jesus, if I believe in Jesus, I'm going to have remission of sins through his name. Amen. The last uh, chapter of Luke. In Luke 24, in verse 47, it confirms this again. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. Then he goes on, you're witness of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. He said that repentance and remission of sins will be preached in his name. Peter's doing this, see, in Acts chapter 10, the verse we read, verse 43, To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall have shall receive remissions of sins. You're going to have remission of sins only through the name of Jesus Christ. He said, go uh, preach his name. And through his name, you're going to have remission of sins. How are you going to have remission of sins in his name? Well, Acts chapter 2 and 38 gives us the answer. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost was poured out. Uh, people were all speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Peter preached to the multitude about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. He preached the gospel to them. And the Bible said they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, men and brethren, what must we do? What do we need to do because of this message you preach. And if you want to, go read all Acts chapter 2 to get it more clear. But in verse 38, this is what he said. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He was obeying Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke 24, verse 7, that repentance and remission of sins will be preached in my name among all nations. Acts chapter 10, that through his name, whosoever believeth in him would have remission of sins. And Peter said, this is how you have remission of sins. You repent of your sins and you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Amen. And, he, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God willing, I'd like to do another a lesson maybe later on baptism. Amen. Uh, alone. But, amen. There shall be one Lord and His name one. The very first verse that we read, Zechariah 14 and 9. I'm going to close with this. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and His name one. What's the one Lord? The Bible said, Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. That who is Lord? Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other name given among men we sh but whereby we shall be saved. The saving name of God Almighty is Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. God bless you today. I hope you received something out of this. And uh, know more about God and more, more, more about the Word than you did earlier. God bless you in Jesus' name.